Welcome to episode 688, Su Kyun Bay, Natural Cosmetics, King from South Korea. This is an outline of episode 688. There are three reasons we study Su Kyun Bay. First, he's the second richest billionaire in South Korea. Second, he made his fortune in natural cosmetics. Third, his grandmother started the business 78 years ago. Let us meet Su Kyung Bay. The U.S. has been a tough market for you. I understand it took you about 11 years to make a profit in this particular market. What are you doing to appeal to the wider non-Asian consumer in the U.S., a market where your brands are little known and the culture completely different? Yes, it is true. The U.S. market is the largest and one of the toughest markets in the world. Hence, what we focus on are the millennials, those who are digitally inclined and very much focused on experience. They have a lot of interest in natural products, so we are launching our brand in its free by opening a retail store, targeting this younger generation with the natural products brand. How optimistic are you about the U.S. market? How fast do you see sales in the U.S. growing for you? From my experience, unless you're actually in the market, it's very difficult to predict. The U.S. market is very large, with great possibilities and new potentials. So, if there's another opportunity to share with you in the future, I would gladly tell you how we have done it. Our company is operating in the Korean market. He was born to a very wealthy family in Seoul. His father, Su Sun Hua, founded a company that grew into a conglomerate with branches in cosmetics, chemicals, constructions, and even baseball. The original company was founded in 1932 by a grandmother who used her kitchen to extract camellia oil for women hair. In 1981, at the age of 18, he graduated from Yonsei University with a degree in business. In 1987, at age 24, he earned MBA from Cornell University. In 1997, at age 34, he took over the family business, which was in financial difficulty from competition in the Korean cosmetics market. His single focus got rid of chemicals, baseball to concentrate on cosmetics, and turned the company around. The chairman of Korea's largest cosmetic maker, Amore Pacific Group, has become the country's second richest man in stock value. In the Bloomberg Billionaire Index released on Thursday, Seo Gyeong Bae took the spot from vice chairman of tech giant Samsung Electronics, Lee Jae Yong. In 2010, Amore Pacific is the world's seventh largest cosmetic firm and employs more than 13,000 employees worldwide. For the past 70 years, with our wisdom found in Asian ingredients, we have sincerely fulfilled our commitment to make women around the world more beautiful and healthy. Our exceptional insights have led us to discover the vitality of nature that others could not see. We pioneered the Asian beauty that pursues harmony of inner and outer beauty. That is why we are recognized as one of the most innovative companies of all time. The secret of his success, innovation, innovation, his most famous innovation was Cushion Compact in 2008. The time is 2008. Location Seoul. Dramas, movies and K-pop spread around the world as if they've been waiting their turn. Why 2008? Yes, 2008 is the year Cushion Compacts were first created in the market. That's right, from Amore Pacific Group. The history of makeup can be divided into pre-cushion and post-cushion. I'm sure you've all experienced your makeup time go down by half. On average, it used to take 13 minutes, now just seven. And you use less makeup. And it's so easy to carry. Shaky buses 
crowded subways, offices. Now they're all places to become beautiful. What's even more amazing is the 81% repurchase rate. Notice how it spreads so well on the skin. The moisture, the natural sparkle that everyone wants. This is how the 21st century makeup revolution began. Lastly, how Sukun Bay sees its growth opportunities. What about your global ambitions? Today, revenue outside of South Korea is about 30% of total sales. Where do you see overseas contributions? My initial goal is to grow the overseas business to a little over 50% and then, ultimately, grow the Korean business to about 30% of total revenue, with the rest spread over our overseas markets. We continuously engage with our employees to dream and challenge themselves to make this goal possible. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Shu Kyun Bei Nine Lessons. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.